Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test Tech, I'm Josh. Today we're gonna to be showing you how to build the FT Easy Phoenix. The FT Easy Phoenix is part of our FT Easy Fantasy Pack designed by our good friend Ben Harbour and his wonderful wife Natalie. Now this plane builds quickly, flies amazing, and also looks really cool in the air. Now if you're getting into the hobby and you're looking for a really great experience, check out our FT Easy Fantasy Pack Get Started Bundle. This is not only gonna give you the transmitter, the batteries, the battery chargers, but also motors and electronics for all three of your airframes. That means one transmitter can fly all three different airplanes and you don't need to buy anything else. So if you're ready to start building with me, feel free to get your materials in order and we'll get started. So the first step in assembling our FT Easy Phoenix is basically pop out the pieces. Let's go ahead and do that right now. Now that we've popped out all the pieces, let's go ahead and identify them and then we can start our assembly. First, we have our main wing. Next, we have our two front nose doublers. We have our main body that the nose doublers are gonna go onto. We have our dihedral gauge to give us the stability we need. And finally, we have the tail of the airplane. We are gonna be peeling the paper off of this to give it that cool flappy look that you see in those videos. Let's go ahead and put our attention towards the main wing. Now this main wing is gonna need dihedral for its stability. Dihedral is basically where both the wings are angled up slightly. When one wing drops lower than the other, that lower wing generates more lift, which brings the plane back to level. Dihedral is really important not only for stability, but also for coordination and turns. We're gonna take our little dihedral gauge and we're gonna clip it on the furthest out feather that we have right here. I like to kind of crush in the center wing a little bit so it naturally sits without any kind of pushing on the wing whatsoever. Once we can lay this flat and we have no resistance on the other side, we can open this up and we can put a thin bead of glue starting and stopping about a quarter inch from the edge. We're gonna lap this dry fully and then we can remove our dihedral gauge. If you remove your dihedral gauge and it flops back down against the table, you need to add a little bit more glue. After about a minute, you can see that we can remove our dihedral gauge and the dihedral is gonna stay put. Our next step is gonna to be to install their main wing into our body. We're gonna go ahead and pop this open a little bit and turning this sideways, we're gonna rotate it in all the way to the front. We're going to line this up right down the center. And once we have it fully moved forward, we're going to line this up right down in the center of the wing, right over the seam. We want to make sure that the body is vertical and that both wings raise up the same amount on both sides. Once everything's centered and we're happy with it, we can apply a very, very thin bead of glue on both sides, on the top and the bottom. Now more glue definitely doesn't mean more strength, so you don't have to put a lot of glue down, just enough to make it hold. Again, we're just gonna check it. Make sure it's even on both sides and that's perfect. Let's go ahead and put our attention now towards the tail as this dries. Now we have this foam tail here and we're gonna go ahead and carefully peel the facing paper off of both sides. There's one. And there's two. Now you're gonna notice as we peel this, oftentimes it'll curl up. If we join both these edges together and we're flying with this looking like this, it's gonna cause a little bit more drag than I like to see. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take it to the edge of my table. I'm gonna lay my hands flat over top of it and I'm gonna gently pull down. I actually like to go back both ways and that's gonna give it a nice curled edge, but at the same time, it's gonna get a little bit more aerodynamic. This way, as you turn, it's gonna flop around without giving you any issues or drag. Same process on the other side here. And there we go. Now that we have the facing paper peeled and kind of decurled a little bit, we're gonna go down about two inches here on both sides. I'm just gonna put a real thin bead of glue Notice I have both pieces of paper lined up as best I can. And we're gonna glue those together. This leaves an opening for us and that opening can now fit right up against here and line up with the edge marks. Now you can see that our paper can basically line up exactly with the edge marks on both sides. The first piece I'm gonna glue down is gonna be on the side with the edge marks. Just put a little bit of glue down there. I'm gonna slide it in and press and hold it in place. 
Now, same process on the other side. A little bit of glue. Press it down and hold it in place. This gives us a very nice tail here that's gonna whip around in the wind and also reinforces the back tail where the fuselage comes together. Now at this point, we're ready to put on the front face of our Phoenix. One thing you may have noticed in the release video here is I actually held off on putting this face on until after I painted the main body and then I could put the head on and it gave it a really cool effect. It's completely up to you on whether you wanna paint this and then come back to this video or whether you wanna basically mark this off or paint the whole thing red or any other color you want. But this would be the time that you'd wanna pause, paint your plane if you're gonna follow along how I did it on the video. Let's assume that you've already painted it and you're ready to move on to the next step. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and line up the beak and the top of the head and the bottom here. I always like on this model to be able to flip it around to make sure I know where exactly I wanna put the glue and where I don't wanna put the glue. We don't have to put a lot of glue on this. All we simply need to do Start from the front of the beak. And I'm gonna leave this top side alone. Now I can lay this down. Again, we're lining up the bottom of the beak and the bottom of the neck and the top comes up. All right, same process on the other side. We always test fit before we put it on. Again, we're lining up the beak and the bottom of the neck and the top is gonna to flare up. With these easy models, they don't need a lot of strength through glue. So you don't have to put a lot of glue down because that adds a lot of extra weight. And also you could put glue where you don't need it. And there we go. And just like that, the airframe is now done. Our next step is to assemble our electronics and install them on the airplane. The first thing that we're gonna wanna do is to prepare our motors and our propellers and install them. Now this plane is what we call a tractor style airplane. In other words, it's getting pulled through the air. If it was a pusher style airplane, the motors would be in the back pushing it through the air. Because it's a tractor, we wanna install our props differently than if it was a pusher. <laughs> We're gonna locate the prop that has the letter B on it, and that's this one right here. And you're gonna notice that there is a rounded curve and a flat curve on this prop. We always wanna make sure that the prop is facing forward, whether it's a pusher or a tractor, and in this case, the flat side is the side that always needs to point towards the nose of the airplane. So for that reason, the curved side is going to be what actually goes down on the motor. Now to make this easy and also not damage your motor, we're going to go to the edge of the table and we're going to carefully line up the can on the edge of the table. Notice I have my wires hanging over the other edge. I'm going to move it around until I find the hole and then with a very steady push down, I'm going to push it in place. The first time that you put this prop on is going to be the most difficult because the holes are sized a little bit smaller to give it a good friction fit. You always want to support the back can here because if you just try to push it in in the air, you can push the back cap of your motor out and that will destroy your motor. Using the table as your friend to push this down will keep you from bending your shaft, it will make the motor pushing easier and also avoid any damage. Now that we got the B prop on and the curve is on the bottom, let's go ahead and find the A prop and put it on the red motor. Again, we're finding the curved portion of the prop that's going to be facing down. We're going to take the can to the edge of the table with the wires hanging over the edge. I just kind of slide it around until I find the center of the prop there. There we go. And we're just going to push down very gently and set it into place. I like to keep the prop within a couple millimeters of the very edge just so it doesn't rattle around too much. You're going to notice on these props that we have an R and an L. That stands for obviously left and right. If we're putting the airplane as if we're flying in it, we're going to be sitting in the cockpit and we're going to be looking forward. That's the exact orientation that we want to do. So in other words, this is going to be your left side and this is going to be your right side. I always like to take my motors and basically put them where they need to be. And that way I can select my motor and the proper side and then I can glue them in. I always like to test fit everything first. You're going to notice that these little tiny grabbers right here are going to kind of push down the foam and dig in a little bit and that the wire is going to go ahead and trail back. Once we've test fit it, all we need to do is put two little ribbons of glue on both sides. We're going to bring our motor down, slide it in place, and we're going to press it down until it dries. Let's do the same process now on the red motor. So here's our left side, our left motor. 
Notice that we're putting this on the bottom of our wing. Two beads of glue. There we go. I'm not pushing so hard that I end up crinkling the foam. I'm just letting it sit and mainly the glue is holding onto this flat portion. Now, as you fly this and you're ready to move on to your next airframe, all you simply need to do is peel off the motors, use a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, and the glue will pull right off. Let's go ahead and route our motor wires now. And for our right side, I'm going to go ahead and pull this little tag back a little bit. I'm going to pass it right through the side of the fuselage. And there we go. I actually found a cool way to use these tags here is you can use these as a little glue tab. In other words, I can put a drop of glue, I can pull it tight, and fasten it right where I need it to be to give a nice finished look. We'll do that later after we make all our connections. Now that we have the right side of our motor passing through over to the left side, we can go ahead and mount our flight control board. The orientation and the side that we mount our control board on is going to be very important. If you mount this on the wrong side or backwards, the gyros are going to work against you and the plane simply will not fly. Easiest way to remember the proper orientation, whether it's your own design or one of our designs, this is always going to be on the left side, and the battery lead is always going to be pointing forwards. Another really cool indication is that our power button and our antenna will be facing down. Now you can actually use a zip tie if you wish and pass it right through this hole right here and zip tie this flight control board in. I would avoid using anything like Velcro because the Velcro can cause the boards to wiggle and that's going to cause the plane to fly poorly. I oftentimes like to put two drops of glue right down in between these two edge lines and glue it in place. Again, when I'm done with the airframe and I'm ready to move on, I can easily peel the glue off and use some nice purple alcohol and have a board that's good as new. I'm just going to go ahead and put a bead of glue on both sides. Just press this down into place. And at this point, I can go ahead and line up my two colors here. I got the red. I'm going to make sure that the, my pins here, my little tiny holes, line up easily. If you have to force it, you're possibly putting it in backwards. I'm going to push that side in. And then I'm going to take my white lead. Again, I'm going to look at the orientation of the holes. And I'm going to push that side in. Once you have both your motors plugged in, it should look exactly like what you see here. Feel free to pause the video if you want, study this picture, and make sure that yours looks exactly the same. That's the wire colors, the positioning of the connectors, everything. Now in our bundle we have included, or as an option on our store, we have LED lights specifically designed for our Easy Series. The important thing that you gotta know is if you have different colors of LED lights, you do not wanna mix and match them. They simply won't work and it'll hurt your board. Now because the Phoenix is officially associated with fire, I got some red LED lights here, and we're gonna go ahead and install those right now. We made these leads plenty long here so you could easily be able to get your wires wherever you want them. So the first thing I like to do is to route my wires. And in this case, I'm gonna start with the side that I gotta pass the wire through. You're gonna notice that there's two white connectors at the very, very top here. And those are gonna be the connectors we want. It doesn't matter which ones we plug into which side, as long as you make sure that your pins are plugged in properly. Feel free to, again, pause the video if you want. You wanna make sure that the connectors that you just put in look exactly like this. Now, you're only limited by your imagination on how you wanna make everything map out and route. One thing I like to do is I like to kind of have a little bit of my LEDs facing forward, a little bit facing down, and a little bit facing back, and that way you get full illumination of your whole entire airplane. So what you can do is you can kind of just simply go here, and you can stretch it any which way you want. This has a sticky back adhesive, so I'm just going to peel my paper, and I can lock this down with a little drop of hot glue wherever I need it, but I'm going to go and pull this back. And because in certain times I'm going to be flying towards me, I'm going to go ahead and bring this right above my motor. Press it down into place. Just making sure I'm not hitting my motor in any way. And once I've wrapped down a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and just pop this right over top. And I can actually use this to hold down some of my wiring. Now that I'm happy with everything, I'm just going to come back with a couple drops of hot glue right where I need it just to make sure I lock down my wires in a way that doesn't interfere with my motor. Okay, 
go ahead and repeat the same pattern on the other side here. Our last step here in the building of the airframe and the electronics here is to give just a touch of reflex on the back of our wing here. You're going to see two little etch marks that are very slightly carved into the foam. You're going to want to bend this up ever so slightly and then lock it down with a piece of tape. Now in our FT Easy Power Pack, we actually have little squares of tape that you can use to lock down the angle of your elevator, dress wires, and basically kind of just clean up any part of the build that you may need. I love these for specifically locking down the angle that we need. Every plane is going to be a little bit different, and for the people that want to fly the planes in different ways, you can give a little bit more reflex to get a more nose high attitude, or you can give a little bit less reflex to get a little bit more speed. Because every plane's a little different, because they're painted and have weight in different ways, reflex will always be slightly different. But if you just lift it up about a millimeter, you're going to be just fine. So I just give it up just ever so slightly. And I can set it across it, and they're both even. Now by this time, our battery should be charged. Let's go ahead and plug it in, cycle our controls, and then we're ready to go out and fly. Now as I mentioned in the opening of our video, we have two different transmitter options. Our FT Easy Power Pack includes the transmitter that you see right here in black, but also if you have a Pocket 2500 series, this does have the protocol that will communicate with this. Make sure you subscribe to our tech channel because we'll show you exactly how to program that and how it works. But for this case, we're going to go ahead and use our FT Easy transmitter that you see right here. Now typically, we tell people to always turn your transmitter on first, but for this style radio, we're actually going to turn it on second because that's how this plane binds. I always like to put the battery right in the middle, and that gives us the best chance in having a proper CG. Moving the battery forward and backwards is going to be what gives you the ability to have a nose-heavy airplane, tail-heavy airplane, or balance perfectly in the middle. Now that we have our battery in its place, let's go ahead and make our connections. We're going to line up our black and our red wires. And we're never going to force our battery together, but just a little rocking motion is all we need. Now we can go ahead and turn our flight control board on. You're going to see a rapid flashing light. With our throttle closed, we're going to power on our transmitter. When we do that, you're going to see a slow flashing light, and you also see our red LEDs lighting. We're going to move this to full throttle, and when we move it down, you'll see our light go solid. Now at this point, this plane is defaulted in low rates. The way that we change our rates is by pushing the right button. When we have a flashing transmitter, we're in high rates, and that's going to be the rate that you want to fly in, unless you have a wide open space. This button on our left here is actually for our lights. Now that we're powered on, let's go ahead and check our motors. Our motors are both pulling forward, which is a good thing. When I go roughly half throttle and I move it, you should feel in your hand a resistance in the direction that you're moving. This means our gyros are working properly. If you run it up to half throttle and you go to move it and it accelerates the turn, your board or your plugs are plugged in backwards. All right, our FT Easy Phoenix is now ready to fly. I'll see you out in the field and we'll put this up for the first time. All right, friends, we are out here ready to fly our FT Easy Phoenix for the very first time. You can see I already have my center of gravity established. I've already turned on and bound the radio. One important thing we want to always make sure we do Press that right button, make sure you're in high rates. You want to see that LED flashing. You can always choose to turn it off, but if you're flying in a small backyard, you want to have that on. Also, if you want to have your lights on, that's the left button. Now there's very little wind here, but we always want to make sure that you launch and land into the wind. The wind's kind of coming out this direction here. I'm going to go ahead and hold it by the bottom here, go to about two thirds throttle, and we'll launch it. And you can see with no not even touching the controls, it's flying absolutely perfect. I'm going to go ahead and give it a gentle left input. And again, anytime that we go back to center stick, the plane. If you want to climb the... Now for our easies, anytime that you go above half throttle, you're going to notice that the plane's going to climb. And anytime you go below half throttle, the plane's going to descend. One thing I'd strongly recommend is don't go all the way close throttle until right before it touches the ground. You want to maintain at least 10% throttle at all times so you have directional stability. If you turn off or if you close your throttle all the way down and you try to turn it, it'll go into something called anti-spin and you also won't have the stabilization you need to fly these fantasy airplanes that you see here. All right, let's go ahead and bring it in for a landing. Throttle in back about 10, 15%, just keeping it level. And there we go. Friends, I want to thank you for being part of the Flight Test family. Thank you so much for building along with me, flying along with me. Our hope is that you guys build and fly these, make lots of memories, whether it's in the classroom or whether it's with your friends and family.
can't wait to build with you again and we'll see you next time.